Um, let me try and help you simplify this more. Let's look at two people in the Bible and how they exercise their faith so you know how it works. We're going to look at two people, Abraham and Thomas. So let's go to Romans chapter 4 and discover Abraham. Romans chapter 4. This is talking about Abraham. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Next verse, please. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become a father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Next verse. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about how many years? A hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now, God came to Abraham and said, I have made you. Everybody say, I have made you. Have made That's how God talks. God doesn't say, I will make you. He said, I have made you a father of many nations. And Abraham was 99 years old, about 100 years old, at this time when God met him. And God said, God had told him this 50, 25 years earlier. And the man is 99. God shows up again and said, I have made you a father of many nations. So here, Paul the apostle articulates for us what happened. He said, Abraham finally believed God. And chose the name Abraham, father of many nations. Before his name was Abraham, assumed father. I assume I'm a father. I am not one, but I assume I'm one. And here, God has finally come to him and he agreed and changed his name and said, Yes, I am Abraham. But there was no change in his body. Nothing changed. His physical appearance did not change. His circumstances did not change. He was not a father, but he believed God. He believed what God told him. What did God say? I have made you a father of many nations. He said, yes, sir. I am a father of many nations. You ask him, what's your name? He said, father of many nations. He believed and he acted accordingly. He believed and he acted accordingly. If he never acted accordingly, if he never believed it, he would never have gotten results. I'm trying to show you how faith operates. Then, we have a second person who acted in faith. Let's see his kind of faith. His name is Thomas. When Jesus rose from the dead, Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that Jesus had risen. They did not believe him. So Peter and John ran off to the tomb and verified that Jesus was truly alive, had risen. And when they came back, they were perplexed. And gathered in the upper room wondering what this was about. And Thomas came in. Actually, Jesus came and met with them in the upper room and said, Peace be unto you. And they were excited to see him. When they left, Thomas was not in service that day. <laughs> was not in church. So Thomas came in. When Thomas came, they said, The Lord was here. Thomas said, No. Notice his word. He said, I will not believe. Except I see with my eyes. Except I put my finger in the nail prints and touch his side that the spear touched before I will believe. For Thomas, seeing is believing. For Abraham, believing is seeing. Ah. That's how faith works. And this is where people have problems. They pray a prayer. They believe God for something. And then they keep waiting for them to see before they say, I have it. Or before they start acting as if they've gotten it. Or before they start talking as if they have it. Or before they start praising God as somebody who has received it. That's not what they do. They wait until they see a change in their body before they say, I am healed. They wait until they see a change in the circumstance before they believe. No. You don't believe when you see. When you see, you know it. Believing is for something you have not seen. So one day, Jesus comes up, and uh, Thomas was around that day. 
And Jesus said to them, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the preprint of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and trust my hand into his side, I will not, I will not what? I'm not hearing you guys. I will not what? That's what he said. If I don't see that, I will not believe. And next time Jesus, Thomas being there, Jesus said, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Next verse, interesting. Then said he to Thomas, Jesus shows up, peace be unto you, he said, Thomas, come. And he said to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. There is no result when you don't believe. There's no result when you don't believe. Abraham was told, you are a father of many nations. I have made you. There was no change in his body, no change in his circumstance, but he acted and talked and prayed and praised God as if it was as God said, because it was. God's word is what changes the circumstance. You are believing God for money or believing God for a change in your business, a transformation. You have not seen anything. And you're like, oh God, you are still praying, oh God, oh God, you are going to change. No. You have not believed. Believing is rest. It's a day that have believed have entered into God's rest. When you believe, you're no more praying. You have rested. You are praising. You are dancing. You are rejoicing. You are counting it all joy. That problem comes up. You say, praise God, it's been taken care of. But there's no difference. But in your heart, it is done. Abraham didn't see any difference. He believed. Thomas said, until I see, I must put my finger inside the nail print in his hand and put it by his side. And when Jesus came, Jesus said, Thomas, come here, put it. And he said to him, do not be faithless, but believe in. And then Jesus says something wonderful. The next verse. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. You know, he had finally seen Jesus, right? He now said, My Lord and my God. <laughs> Jesus said, Then said Jesus unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. He said, Blessed are they that have not seen, yet believe. Do you see where the blessedness is? When you haven't seen a change, you believe. He said, You are blessed. What does blessedness mean in this case? There will be a manifestation. Psst, oh boy. There will be a manifestation. You haven't seen it, but you believe it. There's no change. You're praying over the, you prayed over the situation. There's no change. Nothing has moved. There's no change. You haven't seen anything, but you believe the change has come. You say, Lord, I praise you because the change is here. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. Can somebody say a strong amen? Yeah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Can somebody say a strong amen? Yeah. The Super Church are shining lights to the nation.